My background is in film. Uh, I started doing independent feature films. Actually, my first film out of college was an indie feature. Um, and so then it was like 2015, I was mentoring with the program at Sundance where they bring in young people who get mentored by alumni filmmakers. And then uh, they gave us like a backstage pass to all things VR. And then I put on the VR headset for the first time and like immediately I was just struck with like the potential for what you could do with this new technology. And so that sort of prompted me to just take a leap and go, go for it. So I went back to school, I went to MIT and got a master's with a focus on VR and VR storytelling. And then since then I've been all in. I've always been connected to empowering people in marginalized communities using technology. And so uh, I was working with a friend who has this project called Into Existence. That's like think whatever you imagine, like you can dream it or speak it into existence, right? And so we set up a gallery space in Inglewood that was really um, targeted at showcasing VR for people who didn't get a chance to access it. So really just trying to make the technology more accessible, more inclusive. And so we would we literally would have the door wide open and would just, we had a giant like five foot VR headset made out of car parts. <laughs> and it was like a VR screening room. So somebody could be in VR and then you could look at the giant headset and you could see what they were seeing in VR. And then we would just do all of these demos with people coming in and basically having their first ever experience in virtual reality. Um, and then I would show them augmented reality. We would teach them about the differences in the technology. So it was almost like a community school that was just set up on the block at this gallery in Inglewood. I've had a few different types of fellowships over the years. This one, it really feels like there's just a big community. Like I could name so many people that are in the ASU landscape between here at the Mix Center, um, the LA California Center. Like I've just been really brought into the fold. I just feel like they're, they're building so much here in terms of like starting the community from scratch. So I think the timing of it, we just got like thrown into the mix um, no pun intended, of all the things happening at the Mix Center. And so, yeah, so I've just gotten a lot of exposure to a lot of different types of people. Honestly, one of the main ways that, to be supportive is just providing financial assistance. People don't understand how challenging it is to make XR if you want it to be on like a polished and professional level. There's so many things that go into making an XR experience and um, this fellowship has just been so impactful. There's been pretty much like three main projects I've worked on in my XRs fellowship. The first one is called Black Hole. It's, it's an, a project that's sort of in constant growth and development um, where I or another dancer dance with holograms of my ancestors um, based on my DNA results. But it's really a an, an deep dive into thinking critically about race and how we construct race and how do we think about healing um, or creating new ceremonies, if you will, for healing intergenerational trauma. So I like to think of it as like a new type of folklore. I call it nouveau folklore. We're making new cultural traditions that maybe years from now, decades from now, um, will be something that people look back on and they say, oh, that was one of the first types of blank, you know? Even when you say tradition or you say folklore, or you say culture or something sacred, there's this idea that it has to be old, but we don't often think about what it means to have something that's new and sacred um, or a new cultural tradition. Um, and so that's what I think of as black hole. It's like using this technology, um, augmented reality, using volumetric holograms in a way where we can incorporate them into a ceremony that can be a sacred ceremony or like create a new cultural tradition. The Ghana project is called The Prophecy and it mixes 360 video with um, a VR world that we created where we made a digital twin of the Manchia Palace in the Kumasi region. It's the, it's the seat of the Asante Kingdom. And so you enter this VR world where you learn about some of their sacred traditions that lead to sort of the birth of the Ashanti kingdom. Uh, then you go into the museum, we scanned about 50 objects, and then you can do these different 360 video experiences um, that teach you the history of the Ashanti kingdom. More recently, this fall, I actually started working with the ASU California Center to help them set up a new haptics lab. Um, it's really focused on haptics for inclusion or accessibility when it comes to thinking about how VR technology can be made more accessible for differently abled people. One of the experiences that we were looking at, um, they made a symphony, but out of a haptic vest. So they, they coded the different instruments like violins and different things, and they would buzz at different places on the vest so that even though you couldn't hear the music of the symphony, you could feel the symphony playing out um, across your body. They had another one for people who might be visually impaired where you put on these haptic gloves and then it uses the sensors in the front of the uh, headset. It basically does a LiDAR scan of the room. So you can reach out and it almost serves as a walking stick, like a digital equivalent of a walking stick that can tell you how far away something is based on um, 
the relationship between the haptic gloves and what the headset is picking up. So these are just really early experiments that we're doing and looking at other work that people are doing, but it has been really awesome opportunity to really get your hands on brand new technology um, that not many people have used. In addition to all of the work I was doing on my projects with, through the fellowship, I had a great opportunity to go to New York with some students to start doing marketing for the Worlds for Change. So we went to the Games for Change uh, conference and it's in New York and just had an amazing experience. We got to see so many different VR experiences. We got to go to a volumetric capture studio and we had so much fun, like making holograms of ourselves. That was a really exciting opportunity. It's been great plugging more into the just the ASU community with different students. Um, I had a student working with me developing a XR headset in the Fab Lab, um, working with different students through like some of the workshops I did in like Haida Days last year and the open house that they had here last year. Um, so I've had a lot of opportunities to interact with different students in the different programs. They're so sort of hungry and like thirsty for knowledge and for different types of experiences. It's really validating to be able to work with students in that way um, when you as an artist are always looking to grow yourself but then to work with people who are you know just at a different place in their career in their pathway and be there as a source of knowledge or information it's just really rewarding. I think a big through line with my work is thinking about how these new technologies can be used to bring people together or to, to sort of show people the world in a different way. You know, so often we, we try to use VR, whether it be for video games and stuff like this, to put people in another world. But I think I like to design experiences that reflect our current world back to you, but in through like a different lens so that you're in a virtual space or you're having a virtual experience, but I'm just really giving you a tool or a technique so that you can rethink something differently. I'm really hoping that one of these experiences, particularly Black Hole, will be able to um, sort of carve out a new space in the XR world. And so I'm really interested in ways to take VR storytelling or just XR storytelling and make it either location-based or make it educational or make it something that could be used even from like a tourism standpoint. So what's next for me? Um, I, well, I need to finish my PhD. So I'm in my last year. Um, then I have to do a big thesis project, which is actually Black Hole is connected to my PhD, so it's gonna be my major thesis project. And then I have a lab called the Quasar Lab, and all of my work, that's kind of like my production company, like all of my work falls under the Quasar Lab. And so I would love it to, to be able to get funding to just keep the lab going and keep making new projects. And so, that, so I'm kind of trying to use the rest of this fellowship and the time that I have to do networking and to just create new opportunities to keep creating new content.